Anytime edition. Good afternoon, Hudson Valley. I'm Crystal Laurie. Thanks for joining us here on Bios One's Daytime Edition. Your top stories in just a moment. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Marcus Walter with your look at the forecast this afternoon, Marcus. All right, thanks a lot, Krista. Well, this afternoon, we still have some concerns out there. We have a tropical storm warning that's still in place for the Long Island Sound. That means impacts could be felt across southern Westchester County. But other than that, we're dealing with just a mix of sun and clouds. We see her mean the reason why we have that warning out there is still spinning nearby. It's even migrating a little closer to us. So we'll be watching for a few more clouds potentially as we head throughout the afternoon. So temperatures, they'll peak in the low 80s. We'll be in the mid 70s by 8 p.m. We turn now to new information in yesterday's deadly hit and run on the sawmill. Today, police announcing they've made an arrest in the case. 19-year-old Junior Silviero Ventura of Yonkers has been arrested and charged with leaving the scene of a fatal motor vehicle accident in connection to yesterday's fatal hit and run on the Sawmill River Parkway. That hit and run leaving 18-year-old Zachary Dunn dead. Now, at this point, it's unclear if street racing was involved in the accident, but skid marks are imprinted deep into the ground of the scene. Local drivers say speeding is a problem in that area. Today would have been Dunn's first day at Westchester Community College. The search will continue this afternoon for a man who went missing at Sparkle Lake in Yorktown after a calling for help from an inflatable raft. Dive teams and emergency crews searched the lake for hours looking for the man who went missing around 2 yesterday afternoon. Police say the man was on that inflatable raft and fell into the water. Families fishing offshore heard the man calling for help and they called 911. The missing man's name has not yet been released. Many students are back to school today across the lower Hudson Valley. In Chappaqua, a pending civil suit against the district and a former drama teacher after alleged sexual abuse at Horace Greeley High School. Kayla Mamalek joins us now with the details on this. Ex-drama teacher Christopher Schroffnagel did plead guilty to charges of sexual abuse to three of his students. But with that civil case still ongoing, parents are saying we want answers and the school board is saying we can't give it to you. Litigation and with personnel issues, we cannot speak publicly and respond. It is very frustrating for you. It is even more frustrating for us. But we appreciate you taking the time to come here. We read every email you send. We are listening. That doesn't mean we're not hearing. Still, the Chappaqua School Board District insists it won't be hiring a PR firm to deal with ongoing lawsuits. The hiring of a PR firm does not reflect our priorities, which are an unflagging focus on our children and genuine communication with our community. Thursday's school board meeting went into detail, taking questions from parents and concerned citizens. Most noteworthy was a response to the school district's lawyer, Brian Henderson, arguing that the victim's parents' names should be released. The school board said they knew nothing about that until they heard it on the news. We do absolutely hear and understand the profound effect that the theater incident has not and has had not only on students, but on community, on families, on board of education, on all of us as educators. David Engelscher, the attorney representing four Horace Greeley families involved in the lawsuit, responded saying, quote, shame on them rather than speak to the future, one where children can be safe in school. The school board stuck to its same old story. It wasn't us. Now, in regards to his plea deal, Schroffnagel would be given three years probation and a suspension of his teaching license. He would not have to register as a sexual offender. For now in Chappaqua, I'm Kayla Mamalak, Fios, One News. To Orange County now, where a toddler is dead after being hit by a car. The Gutierrez family in mourning today after their one-year-old son Joshua was hit by a car yesterday at the family's auto repair shop in Wallkill. Witnesses say a customer did not see the toddler playing with a ball and backed over him. Gutierrez was rushed to Orange Regional Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. Police are investigating the tragedy, but they say it looks like it was just a horrible accident. A Dutchess County man facing criminal weapon possession charges. New York State Police pulled over Latif Reed Ogaro on Saturday after he allegedly ran a red light on Route 9D in Fishkill. That's when they say they found a gun with a defaced serial number, prompting police to arrest Reed Ogaro. Police say his passenger, Alara Bedka, was found with a small amount of marijuana on her. She was issued an appearance ticket. This afternoon, Reed Ogaro is in the Dutchess County Jail and is scheduled to appear in town of Fishkill Court on Friday.
An abandoned home in White Plains has neighbors in an uproar demanding the dilapidated home be torn down. Let's get more now from Files One's Christine Corrado. I think it's disgusting. Neighbors are fed up with this home at 5 Terramar Way in White Plains. Trees seem to be growing from inside the home and next door neighbor Carol Felton says it gets worse. It attracts insects, um, raccoons. I've even seen some unrecognizable characters coming out of there, some kinds of animals. I don't know what they are. Shirley Roberts lives across the street and says the home has been vacant for around four years, and it's diminishing the value of the neighborhood. This is my property. If I want to sell it and the buyers see something like that over there, you know, I, I won't be able to get a sale. Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner says the town board is going to take action by holding a public hearing on September 28th, authorizing the building inspector to take next steps. The goal is to convince the owners um, or the bank to, um, to actually clean up the property, put it in good you know, condition. But if they don't, then the town's going to demolish the property. Neighbors say action can't come soon enough. And it's really an eyesore. It should be torn down and removed from the neighborhood. In White Plains, Christine Corrado, Fios One News. A national campaign is being launched here in New York to end on-call scheduling at large retailers, restaurant chains, and other companies. On-call scheduling allows companies to assign shifts to workers with only a few hours' notice. The campaign called Work Shift follows recent agreements by several large retailers to end the practice here in the state. Advocates say three of five American workers are paid hourly and are subjected to last-minute scheduling practices. The Center for Popular Democracy the Rockefeller Foundation and the online organization called Purpose are calling for scheduling at least two weeks in advance, eliminating on-call assignments that often leave employees looking for child care, unable to hold second jobs, and with uncertain paychecks. While the Lower Hudson Valley may have missed Hermine's wrath, it's important to be prepared in case of an emergency or natural disaster. If you live in Dutchess County, you can attend a free Citizens Preparedness Training Program session. The two-hour training session will be held on September 19th at 7 o'clock o'clock p.m. at the Fishkill Town Hall. Its goal is to teach residents how to plan accordingly during a natural disaster. People who attend will each receive a free kit filled with things you'll need during an emergency. Happening this week, you can go Greek in New Rochelle. Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church will be hosting Greek Festival 2016 beginning this Thursday, and it runs through Sunday. There will be live music, a flea market, and, of course, plenty of delicious Greek eats, including baklava and moussaka. That's a ground beef dish made with eggplant, if you've never had it. The times of the festival vary by day, and you can see them on your screen right now. The event will happen rain or shine, and while food and some activities do cost extra, there's only a suggested $2 donation for entrance. Well, Labor Day, of course, marks the last unofficial day of summer. And as we get ready to head into fall, a popular Somers farm that offers year-long fruit, flowers, and fun is kicking off apple picking season today. For 188 years, the community has visited Somers to enjoy Stewart's Farm. The farm is the oldest of its kind in Westchester County. And according to the owners, it's been a target for developers. But a conservation easement with the Westchester Land Trust means it will be protected from development and must remain green. And the apples will be available for all who want to enjoy a bit of fall fun. The farm is open from 9 to 6, seven days a week. We have a lot more Fios One News Daytime Edition ahead on this Tuesday, including a check of your forecast. And as we head into break, we'd love it if you'd like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We're coming right back. Stay with us. Keeping You Healthy is brought to you by the Westchester Heart and Vascular Institute, a member of the Westchester Medical Center Health Network. The Westchester Heart and Vascular Institute, a member of the Westchester Medical Center Health Network, wants to keep you healthy. Here's an important tip from Chief of Cardiology, Dr. Julio A. Panza. Do you know the warning signs of a heart attack in women? Most people don't. That's because many women who suffer heart attacks have subtle signs of heart disease. In at least 50% of cases, women's symptoms differ from those in men who often experience the sudden classic Hollywood heart attack with overwhelming pain and pressure in the chest. In addition to chest pain, women should also watch for pain in the jaw, elbow or back, an upset stomach or indigestion, shortness of breath, overwhelming fatigue. 
If you have any of these symptoms, call 911. To speak to a cardiologist at the Westchester Heart and Vascular Institute, a member of the Westchester Medical Center Health Network, call 914-909-6900. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. You're watching Files One News only on Verizon Files TV. Good afternoon. I'm meteorologist Marcus Walter here with your weather on the ones. As we take a look at the satellite and radar map, we have mostly clear skies, actually quiet conditions across much of the lower Hudson Valley, maybe a few clouds across lower Westchester County. But other than that, really nothing to complain about. But as we look to our south and east, we see Hermine still spinning in this direction. It's slowly drifting back to the west. So potentially as we hit throughout the afternoon, we could see a few more clouds moving into our region. I don't necessarily think we'll see rain, but again, a few clouds are possible. Eventually, the system will stall overnight and then move back toward the north and northeast and out of our region. Once it does that, we'll notice less impacts. But one impact that stays with us for today, the winds. And we'll notice winds out of the north and northeast anywhere from, let's say, 10 to about 15 miles per hour. It stays that way through about 8 p.m. And then we'll notice lighter winds overnight. And it seems like the winds also stay light as we head throughout the bulk of the day on Wednesday. Again, a sign of the storm weakening and moving away from us. So today we're talking partly cloudy and breezy, temperatures anywhere from the upper 70s toward the low 80s. And as we take a look at the next three days, we are expecting partly cloudy skies for Wednesday, more sun for Thursday, and more sun for Friday, temperatures then in the mid 80s. After unsafe levels of lead were detected in dozens of water fixtures throughout the Yonkers School District, parents sending their kids back to school today want to know if the issues have been resolved. Files One's Bob Brown has the details for us from Yonkers. The first day of class at the William Boyce Thompson Elementary School in Yonkers is naturally filled with excitement, especially for first-timers. First year. The first year? Yeah. Very exciting, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, you excited? Yeah. No. Yes? Yes. You're not excited? No. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit? Okay, yeah, have a great first day. However, serious questions linger about the safety of the drinking water. This, after a water sampling test results conducted throughout the Yonkers School District back in the spring, showed more than 30 water outlets testing positive for unsafe levels of lead. With the start of the new school year, the big question is, is the drinking water safe? Both the mayor and the school superintendent assured parents the drinking water is safe. Most uh, of the sources have been repaired. Uh, if they're not repaired, they're closed. So there is no exposure to um, uh, that, that we are aware of this time uh, to our children to let. We replace a significant number of faucets this year. Uh, and uh, those that we have not replaced yet, the water's turned off. So our students will not be exposed to any water that may be contaminated with lead. One parent told us he's not too concerned about the issue of lead in the drinking water. But as long as it's remediated, not much of a concern, because I understand these older buildings tend to have that as a challenge. Some parents think the water in schools should be tested every six months. The mayor says he would consider that. However, obviously cost factors, and there are obviously uh, uh, man hours. I mean, this is uh, this is uh, there were probably over a thousand different uh, tests that have to be done, uh, and that's I mean, that's tri- quite a strain. Reporting from Yonkers, Bob Brown, Fios One News. Lawmakers head back to the nation's capital as summer unofficially comes to a close. A look at the top items on the agenda for the nation coming up. Sponsored by the Pepe Auto Group. 